In this episode, I'm visiting the Cotswolds. It's such a special place, and I've wanted to share it with you for the longest time. We're beginning the trip at Dalesford, essentially an upmarket farm shop, but a place that is entirely unique and a real gem of the area. You can spend a relaxing afternoon here perusing all of the chic homewares, beautiful things for the garden, delicious food and wine, and the magnificent countryside. So this is the greenhouse. And I think this is a lot of people's dreams inside here. It's absolutely stunning. Definitely in my dream greenhouse with all these gorgeous little watering cans and baskets full of seeds. Very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing. I mean, who wouldn't be happy inside of here? It's just gorgeous. Do you think, Sophie? <laughs> yeah, not so bothered. So now I'm here at Barnsley House, which is a country house hotel here in the Cotswolds. And this was one of my favorite places to come when I lived in the area. So a lot of people have a local pub or a local restaurant that they always go to, but I always came here probably three times a month. And I'd come here and have scones and a cup of tea and just enjoy the garden. So this garden was owned by Rose Muveri, who was a very famous garden designer. Even though she was quite elderly at the time, she designed gardens for Elton John, uh, the Prince of Wales and many others. And this garden was perhaps her most famous work. And when she died, it was turned into a hotel. So now people can come here to enjoy it for themselves. So at the moment, it is very late August. In fact, it's September tomorrow. So the garden is way over full bloom. It's looking a bit wild. And also because we've had so much heat and hot sun here, in England, the grass is very parched, so the garden isn't really looking its best at the minute, but I am going to show you around a bit later on after I've had a bit of a cup of tea and a scone. So yeah, this is a very beautiful place in the heart of the Cotswolds. It's totally relaxing. You can't hear any noise. It's full of nature. You can hear birds and there's lots of bees buzzing around. So it's a very peaceful, tranquil place. Much different to Edinburgh and London, which are the two places I've been spending a lot of time lately. So it's been a real nice tonic to come here and remember some fun times that I used to have when I lived here in the Cotswolds. So here's Sophie and she is quite familiar with the garden here at Barnsley House. Bailey too, Vanessa's dog. So this is the little terrace. The restaurant is through these doors. This is always a wonderful place to come for afternoon tea because uh, you get to sit out and look at the gardens, which are usually blooming as I said before they're looking a bit parched now but I think you can still get some idea of how beautiful this place really is it's so peaceful and tranquil this is where we've been sitting having a tea and scones and then the entrance is just through here so a very peaceful setting there are two lawns either side of this hedge I don't know what kind of hedge it is but this leads the eye to a path down to a gate which goes through to a potager and vegetable garden such a shame that it's so late in the year because it's really is there's not much to see in terms of planting everything's really reached its peak ready for autumn 
But I'll just turn around and show you a view of the house, which is pretty special. One of my favorite things about this garden are these two statues, which I think are just so cute. This lady's wearing her pearls, which is really chic. And then there's another one here. I really like these statues. And yeah, this gate here leads through to the potager and vegetable garden. And then you can just see over there, there's a little bit of a temple, which we'll go to later on. There are some people just having a little bit of a chat. So I don't really want to disturb them. But then there's just vistas everywhere in this garden, which I think is one of the most special things. Everywhere you turn, there's something else to see, which makes it very special. And I think is what makes an enchanting garden is when you can walk and there's just areas enticing you to explore and have a look round. These trees leading the way are pretty nice. And the nice thing is as well is that in winter time, when they're bare, you see the architecture of them and it still looks really beautiful. So you can imagine how heavenly this was in the spring and the summer when everything was coming into bloom and at its best. But I guess we all have to age, don't we? <laughs> and this leads down to a little bench. And then as you walk down here, we've got this frog fountain, which I've always liked. It's always good in the garden to have a water feature, I think, so you can hear the beautiful sound that it makes. This leads through to a lawn. And you can see a side view of the house. Which is quite nice. Blue skies. The house is used, to, I think it used to be a rectory, my favorite type of building. And I um, just love the stone. It's so rustic but beautiful. And yeah, this house is one of my favorites in the Cotswolds. It's actually my dream house. So if I could pick one to live in, I would probably choose this. Perfect Cotswold house. And now we're going round to the front of the house. We've got this cute little stand here. And the, this is the front entrance. Which is very inviting. And I love the way that you can see right through to the other end where we were before into the garden. This is on a very peaceful road, not many cars going through. There's another big lawn at the front. And then I'll just show you around to the front of the house. So yeah, Barnsley House, very special, special place. I'll quickly take you through the house so you can have a look. I'm we'll gonna go right through. I won't show you all of it because there's a lot of guests. And then we're back through to the garden. So now we're in a village called Bybury, and this is perhaps one of the most famous villages in the Cotswolds. It's actually featured inside the British passport. There's an illustration of this village, which I think is pretty cool. And normally it is absolutely packed with tourists, uh, much to the, the distress of the locals who get a bit tired of people wandering into their gardens. But it is an incredibly beautiful place. This pub here is called The Swan. They do amazing food, so it's a really great place to come for a day have a little bit of a bite to eat and a drink and just walk around this stunning location. I really wanted to show you this because it is a real typical 
Cotswold village, which is just naturally beautiful, stunning, and unlike anything you really see anywhere else in the UK. So it is a very typical Cotswold village. So I thought it would be fun to share it with you now. Good morning. So I am now back in London. We're at Vanessa's house in Islington and we got back from the Cotswolds a few hours ago. We left really early because we had to get back here for a delivery. So that's done. And we thought that we would just pop into the local little marketplace and buy something nice for breakfast. So we're going to have a nice breakfast here. So we've got some fresh smoked salmon some tomatoes on the vine, a little bit of avocado, some soft goat's cheese, eggs, and some bread. So that should make a pretty delicious breakfast. Breakfast is something that I don't usually eat very often, so it's more of an occasion thing that I like to enjoy from time to time. So that's what we're gonna do here in the kitchen. Now, I would like to give you a tour of the kitchen and of the house, but this is Vanessa's house, and she's only moved in two weeks ago, so, and there's a lot of stuff that she wants to do to the house. So I think it is best for her to do everything that she wants to do. And then when it is complete, we will give you a full guided tour, which will be fun and exciting. So yeah, we're here and we're gonna have breakfast. But I thought first that I would give you a little bit of a rundown of why I was in the Cotswolds and the thought process of being there. So I did go for a reason. As you can see, the title of the video is Moving to the Cotswolds? Question mark. And I have seriously been thinking about my life in Edinburgh and what I want to do next, where I want to be. Um, as you've probably noticed in the last few months, I am traveling a lot here to London. And it's literally almost every week coming down to London, uh, attending events here, doing things here, working. So my life in edinburgh is becoming a little bit complicated and i have to start thinking about where i want to be in the short to long term i.e in the next year or so so i have been thinking very seriously about that um, and the cotswolds is one of the areas that i used to live a few years ago and one of the places that i would consider moving back to now the great thing about the cotswolds is that even though it is deep countryside it's a very chic area, as you can see from the footage that I've just shown to you. And so it's hard to be bored there. So that's one of the reasons why I really like it. It's a very chic countryside. Some people think that it's a bit too, um, you know, bougie, but uh, I actually like that because it means that you can live in the countryside, but still have amenities and things to do, which is always a good thing. Now, the next reason why the Cotswolds is a great location is because it is quite close to London. We drove there in an hour and 40 minutes and um, the traffic on the way back was a little bit heavy, but not too bad. It was just on the road through to Oxford. But really, other than that, it's quite a simple journey, a pretty much straight road into London. So it's very ideal for that. And then if you want to get a train, it's super quick, super easy, straight into King's Cross. So in terms of location, it's ideal. So yeah, the purpose of going down to the Cotswolds was to basically just have a little visit there before the end of summertime, because I haven't been really since the spring. So I wanted to go and do that. And also I wanted just to scout out a few different locations, villages, and see perhaps where I might want to live. So although I haven't viewed property yet, I did register interest with a few local agents who were going to help me out. Um, one of the things about the Cotswolds is that it's a very popular area and I know that when you're trying to rent or buy it can be almost impossible to find something because things just get snatched up even before they're listed so you need to register with an agent so that they can scout things for you and uh, get you quickly on the list and uh, property found for you so that's what I did so yeah I did look around a few villages that I've been to many times before to see 
you know, what kind of thing I could have, what kind of thing I could afford. And it's something that I'm going to have to seriously consider now as my life moves on. I think one of the things you may have noticed about me is that I don't um, get too emotional about these things. I think life is a journey, it's an adventure, and I don't get too tied down with uh, areas or places. Even though I've made a wonderful life in Edinburgh, I'm always looking for the next adventure, and I know that wherever I go, it will be fun and interesting. And if it doesn't work out, I can always move on. So yeah, I am going to seriously consider the Cotswolds. Uh, being here in London, spending time here with Vanessa at her house, I'm able to go there quite quickly, as I said before. So that will be something that we can do if we want. So yeah, although I'm not moving now, I haven't viewed anything, it is something that I'm really considering. So yeah, we had a really lovely time in the Cotswolds. We stayed for one night, but um, that was enough just to see the place and do a few things. So we arrived there quite early in the morning and we had an appointment at 11 o'clock with the people who make uh, fragrance for the candle. And that is called the Cotswold Perfumery. And it is a little um, factory. It doesn't look like one from the outside in the heart of the Cotswolds. And that was the first time that we'd been to speak directly to the guy who makes our fragrance, the nose behind the scent. And it was just so nice to sit with him face to face. We started this journey at the beginning of the pandemic. So everything was by Zoom or by phone call or by email. So this was the first time that we got to sit with him and kind of explore the process of what it takes to make a fragrance. So it was very exciting and very nice to meet him in person. So I will link all of these little places in the description of this video for you so you can check them out for yourselves. And also my new blog, nicholasfairford.com, will be relaunching soon. So I'll make a nice blog post about it as well. So yeah, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a catch up about what's going on. My thoughts about going to the Cotswolds and maybe moving away from Edinburgh. It's exciting and I always like to explore these little avenues and see what will happen. Who knows, I may stay in Edinburgh for a little while yet, but... Um, we will see. Anyway, it was great to catch up and now I am going to get cracking with making breakfast and um, we're going to have this and then I'm heading back to the station to get the train to Edinburgh. So I'll be in Edinburgh this evening again. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. It was great to be back in the Cotswolds and share some of my favourite places and the area from my perspective. So I hope that you enjoyed that as well. I look forward to seeing you next week, but until then, take care. Bye-bye. The wonderful thing about YouTube is that it is free. An endless supply of content for us to enjoy and consume. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate your support, either by leaving a comment, subscribing, or contributing to my Patreon account. I appreciate all of the love and support. It means the world to me. Thank you.